Hi everyone, it's Jay from Mitoso Crafts and we're an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator based in the UK. Thank you for joining me today where I will be showing you our second version of our hexagonal jumping pop-up card. Here it is. So as always it folds flat and it jumps up and pop up with an image on top. Isn't that great? So um, it's the same as the previous version but I will be showing you how to make the mechanism for the jumping image on top. And it'll fit the same housing as the previous version. You'll need the window box stainless dice, dies, the beautiful used stamp set for the celebrate sentiment, as well as the lady with the hat and the in style sentiment, and the Blooms and Bliss design series paper for this project. So I've gone ahead and cut two of the die cuts in Watermelon Wonder, but this time I have extended the die by placing my clear cutting plate on top uh, just before the cut lines on the die, but just make sure that you place it above the score lines so then you will know where to score. It's just to have a larger tab to um, stick your box down and make it more secure on the top and the bottom. So score down the hexagon as well as cutting the tabs on the side and cut the tabs on the top of the panels as well for one of your die cut. On the second one, do the same but this time we will be making a cut in the middle so that will be where your um, image will pop up. You'll need your stamp and trimmer for this and if you align the two points on the side of the cutting path so it'll be aligned at one eighth of an inch so then you're actually not cutting on the middle of the hexagon and you will be cutting from four centimeters down to 11.1 centimeters or in inches, that's one and nine sixteenth of an inch to four and three eighth of an inch. Okay, and then do the second one, but line it on the left side of the cutting path. So again, that's about an eighth of an inch away from the middle of the hexagon. So again, that's four centimeters down to 11.1 centimeters or four and three eighth of an inch so you will have two cut lines and then you will just need to use a cutting blade once you've cut that piece of card uh, you'll be left with a quarter of an inch hole in the middle so it'll be big enough to embellish your popping image on top um, the first one I did I didn't have enough space so it made it a bit tight um, to put the image back in and not embellish the actual image popping up. So we just need to uh, burnish all the folds. So for the decorations, I've gone ahead and cut Island Indigo with the heart design from the window box stainless dies and cut four of the Blooms and Bliss Design Series paper. You stepped up though for the base and for the top mint macaron. This time around, I've actually aligned the edge of my card onto the two circular points on either side just below it and then trace along the stencil on the card and then cut it with um, the paper snips. Or you can always use the same um, way as I did on the first version just by um, tracing the die uh, and cutting it in one hole and then using your stamp and trimmer to cut in the middle. So for the topper, 
I've used the layering ovals. It's the fourth largest die um, in Whisper White. And I've also cut two of the stitch shapes frameless oval, uh, the largest one um, in Watermelon Wonder. So you'll need a thick card measuring 5 by 3 inches or 12.7 centimeters by 7.2 centimeters. Um, we will be scoring on the short edge at 1.5 inch or 3.6 centimeters and then turn it 90 degrees and on the long edge score at 1 inches or 2 centimeters. We just need to burnish the folds on the 5x3 card and then snip a notch just up to the 1 inch score lines as well and then that will be your mechanism for the popping image. So fold the bottom tabs you've created one towards you and one away from you so it will create an arrow and we just need to um, glue that together as well just the top part not the bottom tabs. So again for the rubber band holders you'll need two 1 by 3 inch cards or 2.6 by 7.6 centimeters. You'll be scoring at 3 quarters, 1 and a half and 2 and a quarter inch or at 1.9, 3.8 and 5.7 centimeters. So to fold it in half first and then the tabs uh, one towards you and one away from you. And then I'll just do the same for the other one. So I've gone ahead and cut one of the tabs for the rubber band holder. I will be showing you how to do that again if you haven't seen our previous version of the hexagonal jumping pop-up card. So for your next one, just fold it in half, cut diagonally towards the center, and cut down along the score lines, and then make a triangle as well, and then join up those two points. So you'll be left with a triangular hole in the middle, and then that will hold your rubber band in place. Just snip a, a little bit as well just to make that um, cut easier for your rubber band to go into. So for the topper, we'll be using the stamp on jig again. You probably already know that we love this tool. Uh, it just allows you to uh, stamp the image where exactly you want it to go. Um, if you're stamping on a smaller piece of card, just make sure you use a removable tape or a washi tape to keep that in place uh, and prevent any accident of it moving around. Um, I've used Black Archival for the lady and Island Indigo for the swooshy dress. And now we're just going to do the sentiments on the Mint Macaron cards. So celebrate on the bottom and in style on top. Just make sure that you place the mid macron card on the correct position okay so we just need to construct the box uh, and decorating it in the process as well so glue one side of the box making sure it's nice and straight once that's firmly stuck on um, add one of your rubber band holder in the middle as well. So now we can add the topper holder that pops up. So make sure you align it in the middle of the bottom um, hexagon. Glue the bottom tabs as well and align it along your score line. Again, I would just Fold the hexagon in half and just see if it stands up. Obviously, you can see there that the glue hasn't um, dried yet, but just keep trying that and then unfold it and just make sure that it actually 
stands up once it's folded out. And for the oval piece, just align it along the bottom of that um, side panels as well as in the middle of your hexagon. Uh, so I, I tend to use the glue on the bottom of the oval and then glue on the holder. So align in the middle and then do the same for the second piece uh, behind it and then that will hide the white piece of card that's holding those two ovals together. And just make sure that the ovals are in line with each other and the glue is spread out. So now we can con finish constructing the side panels uh, just by gluing those two tabs on the right hand side. Once that side panel is glued down, we can then add the second rubber band holder tab. So just make sure again it's the same way as the other tab. So they're both looking, so it looks like a G. And the other one is obviously an inverted G. So we're just gonna decorate the panels now before we put in the rubber band. So these these squares are four by four centimeters or one and nine sixteenth of an inch square. Um, or you can use your stitch shapes frame its dies which will fit in nicely along the panels as well. Now we can glue the tip top top card on the bottom of the hexagon and the mint macaron on top with the sentiments as well. You can line up the card along the hole in the middle of that hexagon just so you're not overlapping and making that hole any smaller. For the back of the topper, I've used the large number framelits dies because I'll be giving this card to my sister who's turning 30 and it fits nicely within that oval shape. And then just take the front topper, making sure that there's a nice border around her. So now we can add the rubber band mechanism. So I've tied a knot uh, and made a one and a half inch circumference. So start off with one side, make sure it's nicely in that holder, turn it over and then put the second one in, the other side in. And so much easier doing it at this time before constructing and gluing the base and the top of your hexagon box. So now we can just gonna glue in that tab so it will be easier and it's got a wider surface area to glue and hopefully hold the box in place a bit better. So once you've added the glue, just put it on a flat surface and then squeeze down your panels and then just add a bit of pressure to make that glue stick and dry as well. And then do the same for the top. So once they are firmly glued in place, your project is ready. You have a hexagonal jumping pop-up card. So it folds flat and you can write your message at the bottom there or leave it blank. You do need it to um, make the base stronger as well, easier to put in the base. There you go. Isn't that great? So it pops up with the message and the topper on top.
and it's much easier to put in so just push in the lay the ovals inside and then that will hide the popping topper well i hope you enjoyed this hexagonal jumping pop-up card thank you very much for stopping by don't forget to share your creations using this tutorial with the hashtag hex jump up so we can see your creations as well and until next time bye